Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now this is the weekly chart of Deutsche Bank. I'm going to come back to this story in a second here because this is going to be the main story here. Uh, basically a slap on the wrist for Deutsche Bank with silver. But I wanted to start off by covering Florin coin. This is a coin, if you remember, quite a while ago I covered this coin, alt cryptocurrency, that uh, to me showed a lot of promise and that's because um, it has a message field in it that ha is fairly large and uh, the developers of the coin work together with the developers of this project called Alexandria Project, which is a project to have media linked to the message field in the coin, which basically creates an opportunity to have a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer library of media. Now. Uh, this breakout is really important. I had been buying and selling this coin. At one point, I accumulated probably 10% of the coin. And uh, you can see a, a phenomenal move in the coin here. I think we hit all-time highs today. Uh, it looks like we penetrated 1,500. But uh, it, it it's now backing and filling, and this may actually be an opportunity for people to accumulate this if you want to. If you have some Bitcoins, you're going to have to have them on Poloniex or Bittrex because it's not traded anywhere else but you can see the coin is all the way up at sixth in volume on Poloniex at 505 Bitcoin volume uh, that's an enormous enormous number now I did sell into this rally on my coins that I had on Poloniex but I have millions of these locked away in a wallet that I'm not touching at all hopefully this is gonna have a really big move and I just wanted to show you a post from the CEO of BlockTech uh, who's behind the Alexandria project and how important this idea could be going forward. Before I do that, I wanted to cover this story here about kick-ass torrents. I don't know how many of you use torrents, but uh, for quite some time, kick-ass torrents was the number one torrent site out there. It was shut down. The person who created it supposedly was arrested. We don't really know the truth behind a lot of this stuff, but here's the story. Kick-Ass Torrents was taken down several months ago after its alleged owner, Artem Volin, was arrested. However, there is a new report suggesting that Cat has been resurrected. There is no information to corroborate this, though as it appears that media outlets are pertaining to a mirror site of Kick-Ass Torrents. The same operators of the original Cat site were reportedly working on this mirror site known as cat.how although its authenticity and user security is yet to be fully confirmed. There have been several attempts to bring Kickass Torrents back to life. May it be the original or a clone good enough to give cat experience file sharers have enjoyed. However, the authorities have thwarted any plans of resurrection of the Kickass Torrents at one point late July when the shutdown of the site was still fresh. The admin of the original site came together to pledge to continue the legacy of Kickass Torrents. One staff member by the name of Mr. Black spoke to Torrent Freak saying, quote, We need to remember that Kickass Torrents is not simply about uploading. The heart and soul of Cat is our members, which are family, and family is important as we all know. Nothing can ever take that away, and no matter what happens, we will not let our community down. We guarantee that Cat will continue in one form or another. We will come back stronger than ever they added. However, the mirror site they put up catcr.co was ultimately seized but not after it was hacked by individuals who used used it to scam users the future of kickass torrents is looking bleak for now torrent fans can get their fix on the pirate bay which stood the test of time and the many attempts of copyright holders it's one of the original torrent sites that stays afloat actually that's not the best site uh, right now it's extra torrents and you know they they can fight these people and try to shut it down, but they're just going to pop up like a uh, whack-a-mole sort of thing. Uh, so I think this is extra torrent. But uh, if I do want to get a movie or anything else, th this is a site I go to. Uh, it it's fairly useful. You can browse popular torrents, etc. And, uh, of course, go by the number of seats. So uh, it's still going, but... Uh, Ultimately, the entire thing is going to be bypassed once we have an encrypted peer-to-peer -peer database of torrents. 
there simply will be nothing that they can do to stop it. And that's why I was so bullish on Florian Coin. Let's read a little bit of this um, post that happened October 16th. I want to show you here on the chart from Poloniex that the move pretty much happened right there when the uh, CEO of BlockTech made this post. While wow, Flow has been on a tear lately, it's nice to share updates with a bullish crowd. Note, I'm not going to cover everything we've been working on. If you want to learn more, your best bet is probably to come join our Slack here. And he gives the link. More media types. We're still ironing out, ironing out the kinks in regards to how some media types work in the browser application, but the publisher application now supports the following additional media types. Movie, book, podcast, thing, HTML. So if you have media of any of those types you've been waiting to publish, the library is now ready for you. Publish it here at alexandria.io publisher. Number two, Coinbase by widget. US dollars via debit credit cards. We are number four, number five project to be granted access to Coinbase's buy widget, which allows American bank card holders to make instant purchases of Bitcoin with their debit or credit card, even if they don't have a Coinbase account. Transactions must be for a minimum of $1, and non-account holders are limited to $5 per day or $50 in their lifetime. After that point, they're asked to create a Coinbase account to make further purchases. And it goes on. So very very bullish ultimately technology is going to do an end run around the copyright concept in the west which is really archaic it's just not going to survive encrypted peer-to-peer -peer technology i think florin coin he points out here that although uh, florin coins the first uh, shared effort why reinvent the wheel if your innovation is the rubber and the tire Although they're not the first here, he's going to point out that they're working with the others. Since a number of other projects have started working on the media distribution using blockchain technology concept, we've been focusing a lot over the past year on how to ensure that all this effort is as collaborative and complementary as it can be, rather than being unnecessarily competitive as a default. So apparently they're working with the other coins that are implementing this message field that can allow for peer-to-peer uh, sharing of media. Very, very exciting. So I think that we're in for a pretty big correction here. I sold most of my coins on this rise here, the ones that are on Poloniex. Looking to buy back in, that is nowhere near the main bulk of coins that I have that I sold into these rises. Most of them were ones that I bought in the 500s and sold in the 8s, 9s and I'm looking to buy back in. So if you are looking to buy in, you're probably going to get an opportunity, maybe 700s, maybe 600s before this correction is over. So fascinating stuff. Um, cryptocurrencies are moving forward. There is no stopping them. The, the horse is out of the barn. It doesn't, just like, it doesn't matter whether Bitcoin fails, another coin can take its place. It doesn't matter whether Florin coin fails, another coin will take its place. There will be decentralized peer-to-peer -peer libraries of media that the RIAA and the MPA simply cannot stop. There's nothing they can do to stop it. Just as I pointed out many years ago in my first, one of my first Bitcoin videos, that the Bitcoin is like the Gutenberg press when that was invented. Once the idea was there that people could print copies of the Bible uh, for their own use, then the stranglehold that the Catholic Church had on the interpretation of the Bible was gone, simply because uh, people had the ability to read the Bible in their, on their own and come to their own conclusions and decide that they were being lied to about what it said. It doesn't matter, it didn't matter how many presses were destroyed, the idea existed for this type of print, and then the world was changed. I think the same thing is going to happen with these cryptocurrencies. So very, very exciting. Now let's get back to Deutsche Bank here. I want to point out to you that this volume here, uh, the, the volume is certainly not commensurate with the spike. This is a tremendous volume spike here. This is the, um, the float of Deutsche Bank is, I believe, uh, let's look here. I think it's one something billion. Uh, let's get down to float. 
the float is 1.26 billion shares on Deutsche Bank. And you can see it traded at least 10%, more than 10% of that float in uh, a single week. And so let's move in here and look real close. You can see uh, this is the spike right here. And although it seems to be rolling over, that's a big spike. It's pretty hard to go against that kind of spike. So for short-term option players, you could probably look for some maybe longer range or near-term 15s. We're probably going to bounce from here. And the main reason I think we're going to bounce from here on Deutsche Bank is this story that kind of slipped in under the wire here. Uh, not the story about Deutsche Bank and the Justice Department in regards to the mortgage-backed securities, but Deutsche Bank in regards to the silver rigging. And what is so shocking here is how tiny the fine is, uh, the, the settlement here is. It just goes to show you how the priorities are that the Justice Department is trying to um, extort about 15 or so billion dollars and we know that the um, market cap here you can see the market cap of Deutsche Bank is only 18.56 billion dollars if you've watched the recent Rob Kirby interview he talks about why he believes that the Justice Department the US is trying to bankrupt the most important bank in Germany probably even Europe is because the cozying up to Russia I don't know. It looks like they're trying to start a war with Russia. But back to this story about silver. Let's read this. This is fascinating by Nate Raymond. Uh, New York, October 17th. Reuters, Deutsche Bank AG has agreed to pay $38 million to settle U.S. litigation over allegations it illegally conspired with other banks to fix silver prices at the expense of investors, according to court papers filed Monday. The settlement disclosed in papers filed in Manhattan Federal Court came in one of many recent lawsuits in which investors have accused banks of conspiring to rig rates and prices in financial and commodities markets. The settlement had been expected since April. The terms had yet to be disclosed. In court papers, lawyers for the investors say the deal will likely be an icebreaker that will serve as a catalyst for other banks to settle. Vincent Berganti, a lawyer for investors, said the deal provides, quote, substantial monetary compensation plus the cooperation from Deutsche Bank in the continued prosecution of this important case against the non-settling defendants. The settlement is subject to court approval. A spokesman for a German bank declined to comment. In the litigation, investors claimed Deutsche Bank, HSBC Holdings, PLC, and Bank of Nova Scotia, Scotia Bank rigged silver prices through a secret daily meeting called the Silver Fix and accused UBS AG of exploiting that fix. The alleged conspiracy started, in, started by 1999, suppressed prices on roughly $30 billion of silver and silver financial instruments traded each year and enabled banks to pocket returns that could top 100% annualized, the investors said. Earlier this month, U.S. District Judge Valerie Caproni ruled the investors had sufficiently, albeit barely, alleged that Deutsche Bank, HSBC, and Scotiabank violated U.S. antitrust laws by conspiring to depress the silver fix from 2007 to 2013. But the judge dismissed UBS from the case, saying there's nothing showing it manipulated prices, even if it benefited from distortions. Caproni at the time said investors could amend their complaint, including against UBS, and a lawyer for investors said they plan to do so. The case is in re London Silver Fixing Limited Antitrust uh, Southern District. So there you go, $38 million. That's the fine for silver fixing. So is that connected to this bottom here in Deutsche Bank? Probably. Uh, it's probably a pretty good bet that uh, Deutsche Bank got off scot-free basically for rigging silver for almost 20 years since 1999 with the 38 million dollar fine so uh, I'm gonna be bullish on Deutsche Bank from here just based on this chart and based on that news story so back to this big story with Florin coin um, I think we're gonna put in a bottom here soon and I am hanging on to my cryptocurrencies 
uh, I think that uh, cryptocurrencies are still just in the beginning stages. There's a lot of potential there. And uh, Poloniex is a fantastic site. I'm fairly guarded about how much I leave there simply because I've had a lot of exchanges close up on me. But this is, a, th this is the one I like to trade on right now. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of money to be made and lost. And uh, we're watching Florin Coin very closely. But uh, with Deutsche Bank, it, it looks like uh, they just got away with a wrist slap. And uh, they're going to be back on board doing the same things that the big banks do, which is ripping off the people. And we'll talk to you next time.